What we're going to be working with today is this Adele Brock, Adele Brock, Adele Brock, Adele Ede, Edele Brock. What we have here is an Edel Brock carburetor. Adele Edelweiss. No, Edel Edel Brock. E E Ede Lebrock. Yeah, Ede Lebrock. And you better check and see what they're putting in your carburetor. <laughs> so what we're going to be working with today is my Edelbrock 1406 electronic choke carburetor. Very, very common carburetor to find. Everyone and their Aunt Edna has probably run one of these at some point or another on an older vehicle. I myself probably bought this 15, 16 years, 17 years ago. I don't know. Um... When I bought the 86 GMC originally, it had some kind of strange small bore Holly economizer carburetor on it that ran absolutely terrible. Um, I went through a tank of gas, or let's say half, half a tank of gas in about 30 miles. I could screw the idle mixture screws all the way in and it probably ran better than with them out a little ways. Yank that off of there. Um, the only quadrajet I had sitting on the shelf, and still do apparently, was off of the 78 Pontiac Grand Safari station wagon I've mentioned before. That thing was off a 400 big block, so I was never really happy about how the 305 ran off that big old quadrajet, obviously. And the linkage was, linkage was never set up right, just didn't work too good. So then I bought this thing. You know, if I had the correct Quadrajet on the shelf, I would go ahead and rebuild that and run with it. Our intake is set up for it. Um, there is... I actually like Quadrajets. And in the previous video on this series, um, the intake manifold video, I mentioned that I would like to... Uh, get the old bimetallic spring on the intake manifold working again um, and that I just didn't know if the geometry would be right for this I could probably even make a bracket here that would get that to work and the reason I even mention that is because I just never had good success with getting this electronic spring works the same way um, as the the heat riser one um, it just uses electricity to heat up, warm up the, the spring. But I just remember fiddling with this thing all the time trying to get it to work right, especially in the colder months, and I was just never happy with that. So we'll see what I end up doing. And obviously on that other video I was also talking about possibly blocking off the heat riser passages from the heads to the intake manifolds and if I wanted to use that spring on the manifold I obviously would have to keep those exhaust passages open to the intake so that the bimetallic spring on the manifold would actually get hot and close the choke. But you know every, any time I ran one of those good old automatic chokes that just used heat from the engine. Man, it just worked like a top. Never had a bit of a problem. Enough yakking. Let's start taking this thing apart. Since we're talking about it, let's just go after this choke first off. Just to see what's up with it. I do not have a old school style automatic choke. Um, I can find them, I think on, is it Speedway? Maybe? Speedway parts, they sell a whole kit. Maybe around $30. There's your spring.
And maybe someday I will track down the correct quadrajet. I thought I had one on an engine. Uh, if you've seen that orange 63 C10 in the background on some of my videos when I'm out behind the shed, I thought for sure that thing would have a quadrajet on it, but it just has a 2GC in it. So. Alright, I'm going to pull that pin, just leave that intact there. Should have gotten all my tools ready. I can do that without stabbing myself or losing the pin, that would be great. looks like this has a passage here that I would have to contend with. Otherwise everything else is just threads in a blind hole, I believe. So I think what I may actually do is I'll just get a number 8 or number 10 screw and uh, tap that. And I broke the, broke the darn Number 10, tap, off in the hole. Dang it! I'm a victim of circumstance! And then I can use the little gasket. Had that a second ago. Put a washer, or even just the screw head if I get the right kind. And just close that off if I want to go that route. We'll just find, find out, but I think I'm going to right now just shoot for going that direction because I would really like to get that old school spring working. Well I think I'll go ahead and get the metering jets out first. That little hairpin for the choke rod, better not lose that. Okay, got the rod and the cover and the piston and the spring all coming out here. Just looking through my manual here. And I had taken this truck to Colorado Mountains a couple times. Second time I took it there, my wife and I were going to camp on the very top of Monarch Pass. And so I can see I was looking up the right rod and jet for um, high altitude. I don't think I ever bought them or changed them but I was prepared with the right one I needed. Um, but yeah, we made it up there and it all worked out okay. The worst, worst thing that happened was it snowed in the middle of August on us, on our campsite. I didn't care too much, but you know how that goes. Anyway, take care of this kick down linkage. Power valve linkage, I don't know what they call it. Just took off the linkage for the, the choke butterfly there. I'm really curious to see what the what this looks like on the inside. You know, the outside's pretty clean. Like I said, this thing probably ran on the truck for a good 15 years or so, and this is how clean it is. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to submerge it in anything, I'm not going to bother with any uh, carburetor cleaner as far as uh, dunking it. Um, I'm just going to put it 
spray it off with carb cleaner and that'll be good enough. Oh yeah, very, very clean inside. I must have actually drained out the gas on the inside, thank goodness. Got a little bit of powder and sediment in there, but not bad at all. Floats pulled off here. Needles look acceptable. I'd bet you a hundred bucks I could have just thrown this on the engine and ran with it and it would have been great, but there's always that chance that it needs something other than the power valve being broken. Get our seats out. Little filter screens are clean. We'll see about this one. Closer to the fuel inlet. Yeah, perfectly clean. Alright, I think that's as far as I really need to go on that. When you kick that down, um, pushes extra fuel through a passage here and comes out these jets. So you're getting your extra squirt of fuel when you push the foot feed down, like any red blood at a mark and should be doing. So I'm going to take these jets off. We will blow through all of that, of course. Um, I might take, since we're in a jet mode, I might take my metering jets out. The primaries. And I'm keeping everything left and right on my towels here. Basically anything you can do to eliminate confusion on your part. Do not claim to be a professional carburetor builder, that is for sure, but... So I can get these little baffles out of here. Okay, secondary jets. Well, Venturi's. Primaries.
Venturis are where the fuel atomizes in the air. You got a nice high speed air effect going on through those venturis and it sucks the air through these passage through this brass passage here and it's atomizing as it goes down so the legend goes okay secondaries Thing was cast eight fifteen oh one. I hope that information helped to fulfill just a little fraction of your day, you know. It's what I'm here for. O one, I know where I was working in O one. I think this thing would have been a couple years old already at that point. Oh, we got some varnish down there. Can you see that? Yeah. You know, when it comes to quadrajets, I just love those big old secondaries and just the sound of them when you're romping on it. Came out of the accelerator pump there. Uh, did the ball come out or did I miss that? I don't see a ball. I see no ball. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Hmm. So I really think that is as far as I need to go. Very, very, very simple carburetor. Um. As always with any carburetor, you want to check your wear on your shafts here. If you have a lot of wear on your butterfly shafts, that's just going to suck air right on into the bores here. So if you're dealing with a vacuum leak headache, you definitely want to spray around those things with the engine running and see if that changes your engine speed but anyway I think that is as far as I am going to go on this I am going to hose this down with carburetor cleaner hit it with a brush and uh, just give it a good general cleaning up I think it'll shine back up real nice I don't know if there's any reason you need to watch me doing that um, so I will see you on the other side. Alrighty then, I have cleaned everything up. It's looking pretty good. You know, there's some corrosion through the plating in the deep recesses there. For this project, not really going to worry about it at all. Like I said, I would kind of like to get back to a quadrajet one day, but we'll see. Anyway, that is completely irrelevant for now. Right now, I am going to start with popping the metering jets back in. Our 
secondary. Rather than fumbling with big manly fingers down in there, just putting them on a pick, taking them right down where they need to go. Raffles back in. Okay, put our weighted flapper in there now. Um, guess I'll do the Venturis. Got them cleaned out, blown out, new gasket on there. Okay, secondaries are done. Weights move free, so I will do the primaries. Okay, we're going to get the, the jets for the accelerator pump going, so put my new BB down the hole, and the little rod, and our gasket, I don't think that was right. I'm going to switch our attention from the body of the carburetor to an, the air horn. I've never heard anybody play Chattanooga Choo Choo on that thing, but that's what they call it. So, Gasket on there. I better double check that this is all the same. Yep. And they're symmetrical. Yep. Super cool. Okay. Run for the mail, I'll never fail. If you don't get a letter, then you'll know I'm in jail.
Hey, I want to adjust these floats. You need 7 16 between the gasket and the front end of the float. This one's a little high when it's upside down. This one's a little low. I mean, it's, it's high here and low here, but when you flip it upside down, it'll be opposite. This needs to come down right now. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to grab this here, bend that with just a touch. Probably went way too far there. Yeah, I sure did. So I grab this. That's just barely raises up, probably about as much as that. I mean, it's a frog's hair, but uh, I can try it, see if I can get a little better. Might as well try and prove ourselves, right? Goodness knows I need it. I'm happy with that. That's still moving quite a ways. It's a real real temptation, yeah that looks good, to push down on that, but you don't want to push that needle against the seat. Too far. Man, come on! Somewhere in between. There we go. Now I want about an inch between the gasket and the end of the float here. And I mean it's it's right there. This one's sitting high. I could lower that an easy quarter inch, I think. So then I will just bend. This I could probably do just like this. Just bend that little tab against the seat there. If anything, I went a sixteenth of an inch too far. Right on the button. Right on the horse's nosy. All right, let's throw this air horn on. I'm going to put the spring for the pump in. Throw that in. On we go. It's a good old book. On we go. Snip, snap, and snur. Alright. 99.9 of you won't have a clue what I'm talking about, and that's okay. Situation normal.
as you can see everything came apart again now in my infinite cheapness I didn't order if you hadn't caught on by now I didn't order a officially sanctioned Edelbrock rebuild kit that comes in over fifty dollars plus shipping I ordered one that was more like fifteen dollars with free shipping you know and I was putting this together last night and I was like well that's making me a little you know this looks like a quality accelerator pump um, the spring is quite a bit heavier but looks like similar materials you know this one's actually made of brass and this one's plastic but I got to worrying that the cheapy kit wouldn't hold up with modern gas um, I'm not concerned about anything else really that I've put in there so far but I just didn't want this cup going away on me so I'll save this but I'm gonna put it aside we went to town anyway so I stopped at O'Reilly's and they keep these on the shelf the 20 year old kid that helped me had no idea what I was talking about but uh, God bless him he tried so we got her taken care of anyway I'm gonna put that in and just not worry about it so I may have doubled the price of the rebuild just buying that part but uh, worth a little peace of mind I suppose so I'm gonna get this back together and then we will carry on okay we're gonna slide this in its hook point down here Now along with being damaged and a little bent here, mine was also missing, it's number 21 right there, it's a little S-shaped hook that actually connects the top of the accelerator pump to the linkage and I'm going to look, I'm going to get online and look it up, um, parts house I talked to, they couldn't find a separate number for it. Um, so I just made one out of a piece of wire for now to just get that going but my lever is already pushing against the top of the pump which I'm not sure it should be you know there's no reason for that linkage to even be in there if I'm already making contact So I'm going to see, play around with adjusting this linkage just a little bit. That's going to give me more if I move that to the top hole there, I believe. I just don't know why that... Uh... Yeah, that gives me a gap there. We'll try that. If you need to fine tune it beyond that, you could bend the rod. So just down in that. And in that. I went back and looked in the box that I had this stored in and I couldn't find any of the the missing hook or anything so well I'm not really digging how that looks but Like I said, I will probably get online and see if I can find the correct one. But you get the idea. Okay, we'll get these metering rods back in.
fuel inlet with the new washer on it. Now let's stop and talk about the choke for a bit. I am using that late 60s um, Quadrajet intake. It has the recess for the bimetallic automatic choke spring in it. So I am going to attempt to hook that up to my lever here. If I can get the geometry right. If I need to take this off, clock it different, modify it, whatever I have to do. It comes with its own rod. If I need to modify the rod, because what it comes with is for a quadrajet, obviously. But we're going to play with that later when we get the farther along with the engine. Most of you aren't going to be like me, so you're going to put, if you have an electric choke on yours, you're going to put it back on. Um, so you're going to put the little. Sorry, I already have it on screw here. Anyway, you're going to put little rubber gasket that came in your kit in the recess there, and that goes to the vacuum port down there. If you get, forgot where it came off of, you're going to reattach your housing on there. Put your plate, your gasket, and your cover back on. And now you've got a notch, you've got graduations here, and you've got a line on the housing. You see it says lean on your cover here and I thought there was an arrow yeah there is an arrow under the negative terminal there so you're gonna turn if you have no idea where you're at if you forgot you didn't mark it whatever when your engines cold you're gonna have these three screws loose and you're gonna turn this all the way to lean get your engine warmed up then when it's warm, you could start turning this towards what would be rich, in other words, towards the center. And the moment you start to see your clutch butterfly close, you're going to turn it back one notch. So if it starts to close right in the center in the big mark, you're going to turn it back lean direction one notch, and that's where you're going to tighten it down. Now, if you do this, say, in the winter, it won't necessarily work. That was the, always the frustrating thing for this electronic choke for me, was it wouldn't work correctly all year round. Throughout the year, you would have to come back and readjust this for whatever the ambient temperature, the, the average temp that time of the year happened to be. So, anyway, that is how you adjust that then your positive and negative wires, away you go. Um, then you're going to have your rod here going from your linkage on the back side up to here. And with that linkage there is adjustment with the the vacuum piston on the inside here as well as making sure when this is closed all the way there remains a gap up top between the plate and the air horn and because you don't want this 100% closed you actually want a little you do want air getting in there believe it or not so um, all of that is irrelevant for me right now because I am going to the other style the old school way so I cut a few threads in the aluminum with the tap there is a copper pipe in there so you can't go too far I have a self self tapping screw basically with the little rubber gasket on it. I may put th thread lock on there as well or some Permatex. But for now that's what I'm going to do there. Block that vacuum off and then you'll just have to come back and see what what I end up doing with that choke now, won't you? A guy just wanted to make a little carburetor video have a little fun, be a little bit informative, and it just... Stuff goes missing, I don't understand. Anyway, this choke kickoff little linkage here, from here to here, went missing. This is from the other side. It's either elves or vermin, I don't know. Seriously? 
why. I'm glad I looked around a little bit longer. Started clearing chairs and stuff out of the way. And I found that. Probably would have costed me cost me another ten bucks. Can't have that. So get my little hairpin back in here. There we go. And I remade this S hook out of a little bit thicker of wire and I really don't see any problems with it. I don't think I need to buy one. If it has a tendency to pop off, then of course we redo it, but I think I can run with it. Okay, there we go guys. A simple, fun little carburetor project. Basically covers anything, I believe, in an Edelbrock 1400 carburetor line, the Performer Series. Um, 1406 was electronic choke. Um, yeah, just just have fun with it. If you want to do it, you've never done it before, don't worry about it. You don't know anything about carburetors. This would be a great one to, to uh, play around with and start on. It's very simple, very few moving parts. If you don't have the uh, owner's manual that would have come with it, get on Edelbrock's website and search for your model owner's manual. It's going to be the same for all of them I just mentioned, but yeah, good old carburetor, looking forward to putting it on. Elbrock 1406, the old carburetor, Carter AFB design, Weber cast USA for Edelbrock. Very cool. So next we have a lot of assembly we can do on the engine, the 327. Um, need to go through the transmission, marry the two consummated if you excuse my vulgarity there um, got to get the cab painted before I slide it in there and then we can start bolting on auxiliary components like that the distributor all the other stuff all the accessories fire the thing up for the first time that will be an exciting one um, so come back all for that now God has on my heart today, I've just been thinking about any of you out there watching that may have at one time felt like God was calling you through a person, something else. Um, you just started perhaps reading your Bible, going to church, um, and it was like your old ways, old habits just doubled down and oppressed you like you were just being attacked like never before tempted like never before well that's exactly what it was see their spiritual warfare is a very real thing between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of hell okay and Satan doesn't want to lose you to heaven so he doubles his efforts to try to bring you back bring you back tear you down kill and destroy that's that's all he's about so I just want to encourage you, you need to get back in the Bible, make a daily habit of talking to God, and find a church that is not afraid to speak the truth against what's going on in the world, and also um, they speak, they believe the whole Bible, they preach the Bible um, according to what it actually means. They haven't twisted words and so forth. So don't give up. I encourage you, get back in the Word. Start talking to God again. Life will be great. Thank you all for watching. God bless you guys. See you on the next one.